Okay, today I'm going to show you how to do a reverse proxy using OpenID Connect being protected by the tight gateway while using Keycloak as the identity provider. This is our front end app, which is going to pretend to be the web app where the user logs on, gets authorized by Keycloak, and then makes an upstream request that's being protected by Tyke. So if I go under OpenID Connect, you can see that I don't yet have an auth token. If I do get token, we're redirected to Keycloak that's handling our authorization for us. So if I log in under SEDKY, said key, and I log in, and I go back to OpenID Connect, you can see that we've been authorized. Keycloak has provided an auth token that we can use, and we're good to go. You can see it's even picked up our name based off the contents of this jot that's been provided. If we take this jot and we go over to jot.io and then paste it in here, we can look at the decoded claim to see what we have. The issuer is Keycloak. It's authorized a tight client. And here's a sub that refers to the internal ID used by Keycloak. So how is this set up? If we go under Keycloak, I've created a Tyke Realm, and I've created a Tyke Client. You can see that Tyke Client matches what we had in the JOT. Finally, I created that user that we used to log in. And under this user, I created a role map granting access to the Tyke Client. So clicking into the Thai client, the only things we had to enable is implicit flow, which is this three-legged authorization structure that we use to log in. And then I set up the valid redirect. So when our front end went to Keycloak and Keycloak did authorize, it said it's okay for us to redirect back to, to these URLs. Under Tyke, we created an API called OpenID Auth. And down at the bottom under authentication, we selected OpenID Connect and set up our issuer, which is Keycloak. Set up the type client as the client ID, which matches the client name that we set up in Keycloak. And then finally, we gave it a policy that gives us access to this API. And this is a type policy that we selected and that we created under the policies. So now, if we go back to our front end, we can try to hit our endpoint. And if we hit send, you can see that we're successful. We can get through. And this is because we inject, the front end is injecting this authorization token into the HTTP call to Tyke. Tyke then takes this auth token that Keycloak provided. It will go back to Keycloak, check if it's valid. Keycloak will return with a success, obviously. And as a result, Tyke will send the request down to the upstream. So how does our front end know what the auth token is? Well, if we log out and try again, let's go under open ID and get a token. So once we log in as that user, we're redirected back to the web app. Keycloak in the redirect URL has a bunch of query params that the web app will have to inject and read. So the one we're looking for is the ID token. And there it is. So our web app takes this ID token and then injects it here where it's used in the request. If we look at the code, you can see that it's done so here in the constructor. When we do load discovery document, when this component loads, it will read the headers and parse it into the actual authentication token. It will also read the username based off the claim. The only thing that we have to set up is this here. It's the issuer. 
and the client ID. Notice that it's the same issuer and client ID that we set up in Tyke. And that's it.